the mother of all GNI service comparison, Amazon Q Developer versus Amazon Q Developer in AWS console versus Amazon Q CLI versus Amazon Q Business versus Amazon Bedrock. Let's get started. Let's understand these different GNI services using a life cycle of application. This is beneficial because depending on where do you fall in this life cycle, specific GNI service will be useful to you. So let's say in the beginning, the developer has to develop the application. And for that, he needs to code in some IDE. This is where Amazon Q Developer and Q CLI comes into play. Even though both of them work in the IDE, there are some differences. Q Developer is integrated into IDE and QCLI is integrated into the terminal. So let me show you in action. All right, this is my trusty Visual Studio code. To install Q Developer in your IDE, you can simply go to the extension, search for Amazon Q, and then install it. Now, once you are installed, you have to sign in. Now, this is a big difference between Q Developer and the other AWS Gen AI services. Q Developer does not need an AWS account. You can think of it like GitHub Copilot. The idea is even the folks who do not know anything about AWS will be able to use this service to do coding. So here, if I say personal account and click continue, it is going to open a page where you will be prompted to sign up for AWS Builder ID and then you can sign up, allow access, and then you will be in. This left window is Q Developer. Now this is very similar to GitHub Copilot. So you have an agentic chat where you can ask a question or ask it to help you coding. Now note, you have an option to use either Claude Sonnet 3.7 or Claude Sonnet 4. These models are hosted in AWS infrastructure and is abstracted from you. You do not need to pay per use for these models. It has a free tier with the limited usage of the LLM. It also has a pro tier, currently $19 per month, which gives you more use of these LLMs. Q Developer is not using Amazon Bedrock in your AWS account because you do not even need to have an AWS account to use Q Developer. So here you can ask it to code something. For example, create me a CRUD API using Lambda, API Gateway, DynamoDB. Press enter. Okay, so it created all these files in my current folder and now it can also run shell command. And then it summarized what it did. If I open up the folder, you could see this is what it created. Now, how about QCLI? Whereas Q Developer was integrated in the IDE, QCLI works exclusively in the terminal. So you can initiate QCLI by typing QChat and QCLI will come up. And similar to Q Developer, QCLI can read all the files in the current working directory and give you code suggestion. If I switch to the PowerPoint, so Q Developer integrated into the IDE, Q CLI integrated into Terminal. Q Developer, no AWS account needed, it works with Builder ID. But Q CLI, because it is running in the Terminal, it is using your AWS account credential. Q Dev, as we saw, it is using AWS hosted cloud large language models. Now this is the biggest difference. QCLI uses your AWS account Bedrock hosted cloud LLMs and you are charged on the usage. So if I quickly switch to my Visual Studio code, so I have to run AWS configure to configure my AWS credential before QCLI will work. You also need to enable cloud models in the Bedrock so that QCLI can access those. And if you use it a lot more, you will be charged per token accordingly. Now, another big difference is Q Developer MCP is not supported. QCLI MCP is supported. And another cool thing is QCLI comes with some out of the box tools that you don't need to code. For example, it has this use underscore AWS tool, which can make AWS API calls to manage different AWS resources. For example, if I simply say list my S3 buckets and press enter, 
QCLI will use the use AWS tool and then list all the S3 buckets. It can even create bucket, delete bucket, get the estimated monthly charge for your AWS account and more. Now that we understand the difference between QDeveloper in the IDE and the QCLI in the terminal, let's move forward. Let's say your application is ready and now deployed to test environment. If you want the latest cloud interview guide, including Gen AI interview questions and their answers, with average answers that most candidates give and delightful answers that sets you apart and get you hired, go to cloudwithraj.com slash newsletter. Again, cloudwithraj.com slash newsletter. Your application is actually an agentic AI application which requires access to large language models. So let's say this is your application and to access large language model, you will use Amazon Bedrock. This is the primary use case of Amazon Bedrock. Let's say you are not using Amazon Bedrock, then you have to host your own model. And hosting your own model is expensive and comes with a lot of overhead. Amazon Bedrock manages the infrastructure needed to host different large language models in a serverless manner. And you can simply invoke the model endpoint using APIs in pay-as-you-go model. Not only that, if you want to do a retrieval augmented generation, Amazon Bedrock makes it easier by giving you out-of-the-box tools like knowledge bases. And you can also create AI agent using action groups in Amazon Bedrock. And from the AWS console, if I click Amazon Bedrock, this is Amazon Bedrock. If I click model access on the left, so this Bedrock has access to all these different models from Amazon, from Anthropic, Cohere, DeepSeek, Luma AI, Meta, etc. And you can literally use any of this model or even a combination of it by just calling the API endpoint. If your application needs to scale, AWS will scale the underlying infrastructure required for the model inference. And as you could see on the left, you have agents, which helps you build agents. You have knowledge bases, which is needed for retrieval augmented generation and other features like easy integration of guardrails to secure your agentic AI application and more. Now note that this is pay as you go. So let's say you are using Amazon Titan or Anthropic Opus 4, you will pay based on the model provider. Some model provider is cheap, some are a little bit more expensive. You can also evaluate different models on the same task and determine which one is better under evaluations. All right, so at this point, your Gen AI application is running in the test environment. And while you are testing, you will surely have some errors. And where do the logs go? You will go to Amazon CloudWatch or different services in AWS Management Console to check them out. This is where Amazon Q in console comes into play. So Amazon Q in console is part of the Q developer suite of tools. We already looked at Q developer in IDE. Now let's take a look at Q developer in console. If you log into your AWS console, on the top right, you will see this Amazon Q icon. You simply click it and then this chat box will open and then you can ask it anything. For example, can you fetch my application logs? And it is intelligent enough to go and check CloudWatch and even found problematic metrics and logs. You can even ask different questions like, what's the difference between Kinesis Firehose and Kinesis Data Stream? And it will give you the answer. Now, unlike Q Developer in the IDE and the QCLI, you cannot control which model this uses. That part is abstracted. This might be some proprietary model, or maybe this is using cloud models under the hood. It doesn't really show the user. All right, at this point, your Gen AI application is running. You fixed all the bug and whatnot. You deploy it in production. Once your application is running in production, obviously your director asks, how can we help our customers more or how do we make more money? 
the answer does not magically appear. You have to crunch some data to find out what products are making more profits, what are customers asking for, etc. This is where Amazon Q Business comes into play. Q Business can plug into different AWS services and different areas. For example, Q Business can integrate with Amazon QuickSight and using this, you can ask questions in plain English. For example, you can say, show me what products have the maximum profit. Can you create me a dashboard for all the products that we sold in last quarter, including the revenue and profit margin? And it will create those metrics and give you the data. Pretty powerful. It can also integrate with all your data, including databases, data warehouse, even text and PDF file. And you can ask questions on it and it will give you insights. And it can even perform complex tasks such as you can connect Q Business to Jira, ServiceNow, Salesforce, etc. And it can check tickets, create tickets, depending on if an issue is resolved, it can close tickets, create Salesforce entry, etc. So what is the verdict and what is the conclusion and which one should you learn? So Q Suite can be a little confusing. And again, this is my personal opinion. I have been using AWS both for development, testing and a critical production app for over 10 years. And I even find it all these different Q subservices a little bit overlapping and confusing. In my past life, I worked in Amazon for around seven years. So I definitely want Amazon to win the Gen AI race. And I sincerely hope AWS makes these Q services a little bit more streamlined. Also, AWS recently announced Kiro, which kind of is overlapping with QDev, QCLI, and might make them redundant. So that's why wait up on studying more on the Q. For you guys and girls who want to get jobs or crack interviews, learn Gen AI fundamentals. For example, vector database, retrieval, augment, generation, prompt engineering, what is the difference between prompt engineering, RAG, fine tuning, etc. And learn MCP. MCP is here to stay. And also learn how is MCP different than A to A versus retrieval augmented generation. I have a well received video on this. Please study it for your interviews. I'll give the link up top. And learn Bedrock. Bedrock gives you all the building block to create powerful Gen AI applications and all the enterprises that are building their Gen AI applications on top of AWS, for sure, Bedrock will be the most popular. Why? Because they can combine different Lego blocks provided with Bedrock to create their Gen AI application so that they can customize it as per their need and they can also take advantage of cost efficiency of the scale of AWS. So a bunch of other Gen AI videos and YouTube God knows the best so check out the other recommended video currently being displayed on your screen. If you like this video, click the like button, smash it if that's something you are into. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.